Hi, it's Lucy, and today I'm going to be doing the Artists Against Algorithms tag, which was created by Lena from her channel, Lena Norms, also known as her name. Lena is a person, a YouTuber, a person that I've been watching for a while, a long time actually, and she did this tag, she made up this tag, and I thought it was really interesting, and I was thinking about it a lot, and the purpose of a tag is for other people to do it, so I was like, let me do it, and I contemplated doing this on my other channel because this isn't really booktube content, but I know more people will see it on this channel and I want more people to see it. So I'm doing it here, but I will be referencing my other channel a lot in this video. So just so you know, this is called the Artists Against Algorithms and it's for creators to just think about like how algorithms affect what we create. Would I consider myself an artist? I don't really know. Like yes, booktube is a creative outlet for me. It is a hobby, like this isn't my job. One day I would like to make some kind of money from it, but I never plan to like quit my full-time job so I can do this full-time and have this be how I make my living or even be part of really how I make my living. Like I would like for one day for this hobby to fund itself basically. That's the, That was the only goal I ever had in my idea of if I ever made money from this. I just wanted this to be able to pay for the camera that I would eventually buy for it and for the multiple tripods I've had to use over the time that I've had this channel. So I feel like I'm coming at it with a different perspective, I guess, because it doesn't affect my livelihood in that sense. Because the two people that I've seen do this have been Lena herself and Hannah Witten, who is another YouTuber, also from England. I wish I was from England so I could be part of the cool club. Anyway, <laughs> they're both people who this is their full-time job, or if not their, well actually Lena has a full-time job as well, but this is like an actual side hustle for her. Yeah, that was a really long intro to just say, I do this as a hobby. <laughs> yeah. So the first question in this tag is, do you spend time researching algorithms? So if you don't know, my full-time job is a software developer. So in the sense that I do that for my job, I research algorithms and less than what they want and more what they do. And then I make my own algorithms. Yeah, I do in that sense. But also this tag is definitely about, you know, creative content, the internet and everything like that. So I also do in that sense. I do it for this channel. I do it for my second channel. I've been doing it more for my second channel lately because it is so new. And I've personally found growing a not booktube channel is very different from growing a booktube channel, which does make the advice they give you a little bit, not harder, but I guess weirder because booktube is such a niche community in a sense that it makes growing on booktube a little differently because you are more likely to get a shout out in a sense. So I have been doing some research for my other channel. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell due to the number of subscribers that channel has, but that's fine. It's for fun. Do the algorithms affect what I make? The answer to that is I don't think so. Originally when I was planning this video, my answer was no, but after thinking about it a little bit, I guess the answer is yes. Um, it more affects when I make videos. For example, I know that my vlogs don't do as well as most of my other videos, but I still enjoy making vlogs. So I do still post vlogs, but I know that the numbers are just gonna be less. Um, at least view wise, usually watch time wise, it ends up panning out the same or a little more because vlogs tend to be longer. So my solution, I guess, to that is that I do spread out vlogs most of the time. I did the reading rush last month, which had daily vlogs. So that was like a separate issue thing. But yeah, since my vlogs don't get as many views, I do try to spread them out because it doesn't look as bad for the YouTube algorithm if you have one video that's like here and then another video that's up here and then another video that like is like I think going up and down a little bit is better than basically going on a steady decline downwards and then shooting back up it's not as good of a look for the algorithm I am cognizant of that obviously it would be better if I always had just like a steady incline or just like a steady always high number probably but that's just not realistic for me. So I just make the content that I wanna make and I am cognizant of putting it in the order that will best serve me in the algorithm. And I was going to say, I've never had a video idea and decided not to make it just because I didn't think it would do well, but that's not exactly true because I do have like lifestyle video ideas or not even life, like video ideas. Most of the content I'm making on the other channel isn't like original content, but it's content that I wanted to make, but I didn't think it fit with the booktube theme and since most people who watch this channel are here for booktube videos not as many people would watch it and that would look not as great for my channel 
and I also was cognizant of the fact that maybe one of those videos would do really well because other people from outside my channel would see it and want to watch it but they would see that and then see all my other content is not anything like that so they wouldn't subscribe and I felt like that would also not be great for my content or they might subscribe but then they wouldn't watch any of my other videos because none of them will be like that one so I thought it would be better to push it off to a different channel which is what I did. What would you make if there were no restraints? I would probably make the same things like I said for the most part I don't really have video ideas that I don't make because I don't think they will do well. I don't make every video idea that I have. Sometimes I make videos and they don't work out or sometimes I have the idea and then I'm like I can't actually execute this so I don't make them. I probably wouldn't have the second channel and just put them here um, which is kind of what I was doing for a long time. Like you can go back in my channel and see like I have a few like travel videos and things like that uh, on my channel like from even like the past year I think and it worked fine for me because I was having so few of those like basically it would be like two or three of the videos I did a year would be non booktube content and now I have three videos on that channel in the past two months so I was just having a lot more ideas and I didn't want to keep stifling those ideas if you were told you couldn't upload for six months but it would not affect your wage or views what would you do instead like I said, I don't do this for money. This channel is not monetized, not for lack of effort, but it's not monetized so I don't make any money. So what would I do instead? Uh, my answer was, I was like, I'd probably focus on Instagram instead, uh, which is another algorithm. Yeah, this is basically my only hobby. I only read and do booktube videos and now I paint a little and make greeting cards. These are basically my only hobbies and I watch YouTube videos, which isn't I mean, I guess it's kind of a hobby. I don't know. So I guess maybe I would read more. I don't think I would start a blog or anything to get this outlet out, if that makes sense. Like I would just focus on my other social media. I feel like that's not the answer we're looking for here. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I would do. I don't. Hello, it's Lucy from the future. Yeah, I realized that I forgot to mention something for this question. And normally I just do that little text insert thing, but I felt like it was too much to entered in a paragraph so yeah i feel like i missed an opportunity here to talk about like taking a break and how the algorithm affects that on youtube lots of youtubers don't take breaks i'm one of them actually i have only stopped uploading on my channel for maximum like one and a half months i actually did a video when i came back after doing that because i was feeling like down about my channel i might link it down below it's like three years that was like three years ago actually the last time i actually took a break from youtube so probably if I didn't have to upload for six months, I would enjoy the break for like three months. I would definitely miss it. The algorithm does keep me from taking a break kind of because I worry that if I don't upload, even missing like my Thursday upload that technically doesn't exist, I never announce it because I miss it a lot. Um, but like even missing that I feel like is bad for the algorithm. So stop posting for more than a week. Like I haven't done that in a really long time because I do worry about uh, the algorithm and that does affect me in the sense like I, like I said this is my only hobby though this is the only thing that I do sometimes I do want to take a break and I don't because I don't want to mess up too much so yeah I feel like I should have put that in there that the algorithm does stop people from taking breaks stops me from taking breaks it stops probably most people who upload and yeah I feel like I should have mentioned that so I added a little clip here you can hear some birds outside it's kind of raining and yeah Back to the video. What's the best thing the algorithm has suggested to you? Booktube. I think I've talked about this multiple times whenever I talk about how I found Booktube. Literally, I don't remember what I was searching, but I think I was looking for like a book review or something, as you do. And I discovered there was many channels who make videos about books. So then I started watching them and then I started making videos. And yeah, I would not have discovered Booktube if the YouTube algorithm, the search algorithm hadn't shown me that. Like I hadn't watched that one book review or something, whatever I was searching. And it was like, oh, you watched that one video. Now you need to see all these other videos in that niche. What's the best thing you've discovered through human suggestion? This was so hard for me because I realized my whole life is so integrated into the internet that I have really not discovered anything through human suggestion. Really digging back, I think uh, if it was anything, it would be a TV show. I think my friend told me about how to get away with murder, which made me start watching it. And I love that show now. But even like other shows I watch, it's because I guess com TV commercials aren't really algorithm suggested, but they're not really human suggested either because that's how I find most of my TV shows or I found them back in the day before Netflix and now Netflix. Most of the shows that I watch are because 
Netflix is like, you would enjoy this. <laughs> Even going away from TV shows, most of my book recommendations now come from booktubers. And like some of the booktubers, have probably been suggested to me by human like booktubers do do shout out videos but even if a booktuber did do a shout out video i can't think of them right now and like shout out threads on twitter and things like that technically those would be algorithm algorithmically suggested because they showed up on my twitter timeline and that's a whole different algorithm and so like the algorithm decided to show me that tweet on my timeline so then i'm like yeah i just went into a whole little hole of is anything natural now so what's a better way the algorithm could work so this one i also had a hard time with because i don't really know like youtube is definitely paying a lot of very smart people to figure out the best way to make their algorithm work and since we have what we have they have obviously not figured it out yet so yeah hannah witten suggested that you should be able to like sort by dislikes like basically the way the youtube algorithm works right now is that you watch a video, YouTube is like, oh, you watched like that whole video, so it must mean you want to see more of that content and it finds other videos that other people have also watched after watching that video and it suggests them to you. Um, that's how part of it works. And sometimes you watch a video because the, the clickbait title got you and it doesn't mean you really liked the content or even wanna see more of that, but YouTube just sees that you watched it, so it just assumes that you wanna see more of it. And Hannah suggested that you be able to like dislike a video right now the dislike button on youtube videos does not do anything at all it just it counts as engagement but it doesn't say oh people don't like this it just says people have reactions to that so that means you should suggest it because more people will watch that because so many people have had a reaction to it if that makes sense so she wants basically the dislike button to actually work and not show you more of that content right now you can tell youtube like on your like home page i think if you see content that's being recommended to you, you can say, don't show me content like this. And you can tell them why even. And I don't know how they're using that exactly. That's the way you can do that, but it doesn't do it organically. You have to go out of your way. So that's one way that it could work better. Um, there is a whole thing about, you know, the whole like Nazi side of YouTube, which is apparently a thing, but I know that it is, it is a problem. So if they could figure that out, that would be a great way for the YouTube algorithm to work. I don't really have an answer. I would like those things, but they're all incredibly hard. Like the reason that YouTube works the way it does is because this is not because it's the easiest, but it's kind of the easiest to balance all their needs because YouTube also needs to make money and YouTube needs people to like watch content. And the best way to watch content is show them more content that they have already watched or similar to things that they've already watched. So that's what they're doing now. And yeah, it's hard to balance that. So I can kind of see it. <laughs> How can people support your work outside of the algorithm? Uh, short answer, you can't. Monetarily, you can't support my work outside of the algorithm. I don't know, it feels weird to call this work because it is a hobby even though I do spend a lot of time on it. Two birds just fought, like they're fighting, oh my god. That was the weirdest thing I've ever witnessed. Every time I look out this window, something wild always happens. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, monetarily, I don't have a Patreon or anything, but for now, monetarily, you can support me. I always have a link down below for either the book depository or bookshop.org and if you buy books through those links then I get a commission from that and if you use the bookshop.org link then 10% of that also goes to indie bookstores so really suggest that I want to convert every link to the bookshop.org link but it's hard when I don't specifically talk about a book in the video because like the way the book depository works is that I give you the link and you can search on there and anything you buy while you're browsing goes to, like I get the commission for that but bookshop it's only if I give you a link for the specific book or you go to my page and buy a book that's already on the page so I can't predict what book you're going to buy if I'm not talking about a book specifically so yeah but I am trying to move away from the book depository because it's owned by the rainforest company and I'm trying to move towards buying books not on the rainforest company so yeah but that's the only way you can support me monetarily if you ever decide to. Not monetarily, like supporting my channel, get helping my channel grow. Um, everything you do will also be affected by algorithms. The, the way to support me is basically the way you support any channels. Liking my videos, commenting on my videos, helps tell the YouTube algorithm that people are engaged with my content. Um, watching my videos would really help and watching them all the way through always helps because it tells people that people aren't just like I'm not clickbaiting people basically and then sharing my videos on other social medias on your Instagram I usually post my videos on Twitter and maybe you came to this video through a Twitter link or something then 
retweeting that tweet and so other people can find my videos is really helpful to me just sharing my content basically and just all the you know stereotypical things that youtubers need people to do and the last question is do you support other creators work and if so who so i'm gonna do this uh both the same way i did the last question monetarily and not monetarily monetarily i do support a few creators on patreon i will go through them now all of these people have youtube presence because that is how i find the creative people that i like basically cat black is a youtuber who talks about like social things i guess through uh the lens of her being a black trans woman and i think she's really funny and yeah she's just a great information source i think and she's very casual. I also support Lena Norms, who was the creator of this video on Patreon. I'm a member of her Gumption Club because I just like her content. I don't know. I just wanted, I wanted to, so I did. I support Minnie Small, who uh, is an artist. They're all art, I guess all artists, like a, a, a physical artist. She, she paints. <laughs> that, that's what I'm trying to say. She makes painting videos and she does like a lot of things that encourage other like drawing art what do you call that fine arts where she talks about like topics that deal with that like how to make a uh, piece on commission or something like that or working on your art and things like that and she has a really calming soothing voice and her art is really pretty cheyenne barton who is also another artist basically kind of the same thing her youtube content is mostly like very chill vlogs where you just see her do her work and run her shop and i really like that and she has really cute art <laughs> Halise, who is a, a video creator, I forgot what she calls herself. Um, it, she has like a special word, I forgot it. But yeah, she makes videos and she is also a freelance. Uh, it's not freelance because she has a company name for it and she works for it and sometimes her husband works for it, I think, or her husband will work for it. Anyway, I support her on Patreon and she makes really cool videos. If you really like cinematography, I really su suggest her channel because she's really good at that. And the last one is She Meets City, who is another artist. Most of her videos are like vlogs where she's showing how she runs her shop and everything. And like not monetarily, I do try to do the good YouTube subscriber things where I subscribe to channels. I comment on people's videos i have not been great at commenting on people's videos lately so if you haven't seen me under your videos in a while that's why i just have not been great at it lately and i'm super sorry for that but i do try to comment on people's videos uh, i like every video i watch and i do try to share the videos that i see on my timeline on twitter like when other people are posting their video i do try to retweet nowadays that's what i'm trying to do to support other creators and yeah i'm not as at like organically sharing things that I like uh, and I would like to get better at that but yeah this video has been very long to film and I'm super sorry about the lighting it, it looks like it's gonna rain I guess that's why those birds were fighting I wish I had a, like a video of that that was I guess I could have turned the camera but then my shot would have been super weird anyway yeah so thank you so much for watching if you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to do this tag do it I didn't create it I don't know why you would need my permission <laughs> but yeah I would like to see other people do this tag, especially on booktube, just because, I don't know, it's a community I'm part of, so I want to see other people do it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I make more videos where I talk about books, less about algorithms, although I think I'm going to do another video about algorithms soon, so I don't know. Anyway, yeah, and subscribe to my second channel if you want to see videos that are not about books. Comment down below any thoughts you've had while watching this video, and I think that's it. Hit the notification bell, subscribe to my- no, not subscribe follow my other social media i have twitter which i mentioned and instagram which i think i also mentioned they're both linked down below and yeah i'll see you in my next video bye